considered going to see a Chinese medicine doctor or Chinese medicine practitioner or acupuncturist, you may not be aware that historically and traditionally, there are four primary methods of healing used in Chinese medicine. Now in this video, I wanna share what those four methods, the primary methods are, so that if you go to see a practitioner, you know what to expect, as well as you know all the resources that you have to help in your healing journey. Hey, I'm Dr. Alex Hein, licensed acupuncturist and Chinese medicine doctor, author of the health book, Master the Day. Now I've included two very important links right below this video. The first is for a free download, which is four daily rituals that can help you add years to your life with traditional Chinese medicine. As well as if you sign up below, you'll also have info on where to see me in my private practice or online via telemedicine. So one of the first modalities that you're probably familiar with, since it's common now throughout the US and parts of the world, is acupuncture. So in acupuncture, the Chinese medicine practitioner will do some kind of differential diagnosis, and even doing that has many different methods. And they'll basically insert these very fine hair-sized needles on certain channels and certain points of your body to help reestablish the communication between varying parts of your body. Now, acupuncture even includes non-insertive acupuncture in the Japanese traditions, where sometimes even just a metallic needle-looking object is held on the actual skin and is used to generate a similar response. But again, these tools, one of them is called the tation. It's actually non-insertive, but it still is metallic. So there's something very interesting there regarding what it does to the electrical current of the body. Now, the second method is moxibustion. Moxibustion is the burning of a medicinal herb, artemisia, and the herb is burned on various parts of the body that are also aligned with the channels and the acupuncture points throughout the body. So moxibustion is typically used, one, if there's considered cold, like it's great for pain conditions, and it's also used just to increase circulation in a general sense related to that channel or that acupuncture point. So for example, let's say you've overeaten, you're experiencing a lot of bloating, you can do moxibustion on REN12, which is about midway in your belly, and it'll help increase some of the circulation and some of the warmth to decrease that bloating and that indigestion. So moxibustion also comes in many methods from a moxa stick to a moxa box to direct moxibustion right on your skin. The third method of healing and the area that I really specialize in is Chinese herbal formulas. So in ancient times, Chinese herbs were taken in many different ways, but the main method was via a decoction. So in a decoction, the herbs are typically soaked, then boiled for about 30 to 40 minutes, simmered, and then usually reboiled again or even a third time, and then you then drink them three times a day, for example. So the decoction has been one of the most ancient classic methods throughout history and still is the strongest method that I'm aware of of taking Chinese herbs. Now, due to the inconvenience of it, there are other methods as well, but in modern Chinese medicine, the majority of practitioners use granules, which are basically the decocted herbs like that, that are then dried and often combined with binders to have this powder. And the powder is then mixed into an herb jar and the formula is then mixed that way. So herbs have always been uh, a heavy hitter focus for internal medical problems, as well as external washes and things like that. Now the fourth method that's also common has been Tui Na, or methods related to massage, we can say. There are other methods in Chinese medicine, like for example, bone setting, and probably other methods I'm not even aware of. But in Tui Na, massage techniques are used to not only diagnose, assess what's going on with the channels, there's a whole acupuncture system just based on diagnosis and treatment by palpating the channels throughout the entire body, the arms, the legs, the chest, the neck, the shoulders, as well as treating this way. With Tui Na specifically, you're typically not using needles, you're using your fingers to actually palpate the channels or increase circulation or help with tension. And Tui Na is still based off of Chinese medical theory typically. So you're still typically using those channels to understand what's going on, to not only treat, but also diagnose at the same time. I once saw a Chinese medicine practitioner who specialized in Tui Na, and he was palpating something called the back shoe points in the middle of my back. And he specifically asked me a few questions about 
how certain organs were doing and if I had a certain number of symptoms. Amazingly, this guy diagnosed three out of three of my symptoms of all the symptoms he could guess by palpating the back shoe points which are correlated with certain organs in the body. He accurately diagnosed what I had, the symptoms, based on palpating certain spots of my body using these Tway Na techniques. So that really impressed me. And all of these methods, for example, can be standalone methods of treatment. And most masters tend to pick one and tend to specialize in one. But like the great Dr. Sun Tzu Miao said, you need to use all of them. These are all tools at our disposal to help our patients and to be great. So I thought I would share this because I thought it was very interesting. You know, going to a traditional school, you often don't even know that these are other tools that you can and should use to help your patients get results. And I've had experience with all of them as a patient myself. So the four most common tools a Chinese medicine practitioner will use on a daily basis helping patients. Now again, if you guys want, the free link below this video is four daily rituals that can help you add years to your life with traditional Chinese medicine. There's also info if you'd like to become a patient of mine down below this video and you click that. And then of course, before you go, check out these two related videos on this topic here. Thank you.